Jack, why don't you tell us uh, your story about going into Normandy and before going up to the bridge. Okay. Uh, have you seen the pictures of uh, us preparation and Jake had suggested during reading books of the First World War about life, so we decided that, he rather decided that less hair we got, less lice we're going to have. So everybody started getting a near koi skinned off, and they said, uh, what the heck did you use? I said, well, we all got a first aid pack with a razor in it, you know. So I don't recall too much. That's a long, long time ago. But anyhow, that was our preparation. And when the 82nd went into Italy, uh, our Navy shot down quite a few of our own planes. So at this time, they put recognition stripes on the planes you know, around the wings and around the fuselage. So that was, they asked me, like the story that came out about the filthy turned he had red paint and all on us. We had no red paint. We just used the black and white paint right off the wet paint on the plane. And he started making uh, Indian signs all over us and here and there, you know, and everywhere. So that was our preparation besides all the training we had. So... Uh, they normally think a flight just goes up and goes right so right over. You go up and you form your echelons and your your wing groups and whatnot. And uh, a lot of these pilots were new, and when uh, we flew in, uh, they caught all kinds of flack and and fire from down below. And this was new to those fellows, but they just dumped us out. And they dumped us out, our plane, right over St. Comet de Mont, a whole battalion of Germans. But what had happened in the process of making the approach, black or something come up through the floor and busted Billy Green's chute open, so it just billowed all over the place, so we pushed him on the side to get out. But everybody that went out before us was dumped right on St. Comet de Mont, and Mr. Coyne here is an example of what happened to them. They all got the all first part of our flight got either killed or captured. And we lost Lieutenant Mellon then, so uh, the first one of our fellows, I, uh, well, I met some other fellow, and he was whimpering and crying terrible, and I said, if you don't stop all that damn noise, I'll shoot your ass right here, and I meant it, because he's going to get about 10 guys killed, you know. Well, he didn't want no parts of me, so he took off, and next man I met was Mike Marquez. And they told us that these irrigation ditches were 12 feet wide and 2 feet deep. Well, it was just the opposite. Mike stepped in one, he's gone, you know. So I yanked him out for his rifle, and what they, what they had to do was put their rifle in the Griswold bag. They had to get out of their May West and their chute and their, their open the zipper and get the M1, put it together in three pieces, and then load it before they could shoot back at the enemy. And I... I was a junior in the NRA then, and I know a little bit about shooting, so I wanted no parts of this, so I managed to get a hold of a no three. And that means I got one in the chamber and a safety on, the firing pin lock, so all I had to do was flip the safety and I could shoot back. But when I hit the ground, the muzzle hit the ground and it stock went up and knocked my shoulder out. So uh, it went back in, but it was painful. So anyhow, I gave Mike my Right for the next fellow we met was Clarence Ware, and I don't know, the other fellow was Plauda, and, and later we met Jake, but the first thing we had done was blow up the power lines between Carentan and Cherbourg, and then we found a manhole where the telephone came, and we blew that up. And uh, our objective was to take the bridges over the Dow River, from Carentan to the beaches. And this particular bridge was a wooden bridge, but big, strong wooden bridge that tanks and all could go over, you know. So, and the other bridge was a, further up the river was, they call it a walking bridge, but it wasn't because it was a dog cart bridge because in those days the farmers took their milk to town in dog carts, you know, just like you see pictures from the Netherlands and all. But anyhow, we managed to get down there, but on the way down, we got hit. And I've always kind of resented we had a, 
open medicum when we our object was to, uh, under no circumstances get in any firefight or anything else but take those bridges because if we didn't take those bridges and that panzer unit got over there we'd have had another Dan dunkirk on our hands you know because these are mobile tanks they can walk and move anywhere else you know most of the other uh, artillery and the German side are stationed in one place, you know, once those destroyers found them, what they took, knew where to knock them out, but if you had armored units there, they could relocate themselves and keep shooting, you know, so uh, I've always thought that was, our objective was so important that our own planes didn't know, we were separated for about four days, nobody knew where we were, and they had no contact but 3rd Battalion, which we jumped with, and uh, we had taken our objective, so next thing we knew, uh, here comes our own planes in, bombing us right on our bridge, they killed about six more men, but we finally blew the bridge up, and just a few years back, Jake and I managed to get back to that bridge, now, I had been there before, but I couldn't get on the American side because of the swamps and, and the uh, irrigation ditches. So we come in from the other side, and that was where the Germans were with foliage. They were, had something to cover them, but when we stuck our head up, it was like a turkey shoot. There was nothing behind us but Angleville Plain, so, and we were under observation all the time. So for years, I wondered why Jake didn't help me and Mike. We blew the roadbed up. We gathered all the Hawkins mines and blew the red boat up to the, so we could dig through to the other side because we had no medics. We knew someone was over there, but no contact with them. So years, I, I never realized that we had mortars come in and Jake was half blind at that time because one hit and the whole side of his face was full of gro uh, gravel and whatnot. So. Uh, those are the kind of things that come back later years when you start thinking about it, you know. But anyhow, that was our objective, and that's the objective we took in Normandy. Only four men left to do the job.